This was the hardest job I ever had, was working in a shoe store. Why? It's just, you know, you know, trying to please women is, is difficult. <laughs> sure who Steve Madden is? Look down. I cannot believe you're Steve Madden. I know. I hope you're not Hello. disappointed. That's so cool. Not at all. You're so cool. <laughs> the footwear mogul whose shoes are sold in nearly 60 countries. Where are you from? Venezuela. Venezuela, great country. Enjoys every part of the business including right, weekly like visits to his own New York stores. This is great, I'm get that. I'm into the, the hair. I'm into the hair, I'm into the dress boot. He even knows the name of almost all of his shoe styles. That's called the Robin, that's called the Marco, that's the Rawlings. I know them. This How? Is, How do you remember all of them? Well, this is what I do, this is what I do. We're not worried about the volume. And Madden does it well. I mean, there's no point in making a rigmarole out of something that they're not ready to accept anyway. Last year, his company walked off with more than $1.3 billion in sales. I probably have 20 pairs of Steve Madden shoes. They're comfortable and they're very stylish and um, the price is really good. From boots to sandals to stilettos, Madden designs many of his top-selling shoes at his factory in the New York City borough of Queens not far from the Long Island suburb where he grew up. How does it feel to come back to your hometown being the success that you are? It's a nice feeling. Um, uh, people are much nicer to me than when I was growing up, that's for sure. <laughs> now, you worked here when you were a teenager. When you walk in, however many years later, decades and decades yeah. later, and you see a whole display of your own it's, shoes, are you used to that already? No, I'm not, I'm not used so to it. So how do you feel? It feels great. What is it about shoes that grabs you? I suppose the marriage of art and commerce is interesting. Did you get any heat for being a guy who's interested in shoes, lady shoes? Absolutely. Most of my friends would, you know, get on the train and go into the city. And I would go to the town that I lived in and worked in a shoe store with a shoehorn sticking out of my pocket. And they laughed at me. And it seemed like my prospects were dim. <laughs> <laughs> so in 1975, Madden enrolled at the University of Miami. What did you major in in college? Um, sun tanning, drugs. I didn't last long there. Why did you drop out? My father wouldn't pay anymore. He called me up and he said, go get a job. You're not taking this seriously and I'm not wasting my money. So where'd you end up? Working in a shoe store. With only $1,100 in the bank, he started selling a clog he named the Marilyn. The shoe was an instant hit. Within three years, Madden had opened his first store in New York's trendy Soho. Local, legendary place. <laughs> While making it big, Madden came often to this small coffee shop. Nice to meet you. If we were sitting here with the Steve who grew up in Cedarhurst right. in the 70s, what are, what are a couple things you, you would tell him Oh, God, you know, that's, uh, okay, yes. I would tell him to be patient, don't take shortcuts, and uh, I would mostly don't take shortcuts. Madden learned this the hard way. In 1992, he went into business with Jordan Belfort, the crooked stockbroker played by Leonardo DiCaprio in Martin Scorsese's film The Wolf of Wall Street. My name is Jordan Belfort. At the tender age of 22, I headed to the only place that befit my high-minded ambitions. Belfort's brokerage took Madden's company public and artificially inflated its stock price. He said to me, Steve, you got this great business. We can raise money for you. I didn't really believe him, you know, I didn't, but he said, no, we're like dream makers. And I never had any money, you know. And my business was like my bankroll in my pocket. And so it happened. They did raise money for me, more than I ever dreamed of. Did you know that anything you were involved with was wrong? In the beginning, no, but while we were doing it, it sort of did not feel right. And that I was doing the wrong thing, and it was just, you know, you know, just taking a shortcut, just greed and stupidity. Did you feel like you were doing it for the sake of your company? No, it was just greed on my part, it was just pure and simple. We were lying to ourselves, saying we weren't doing anything wrong, and a lot of people got hurt as a result of what we did. And so, 
I deeply regret it. And, you know, I did the, paid the price. Yeah. It was pretty harsh, the price, too. The price was 31 months in prison, a sentence Madden began serving in 2002, which may have been the best thing that ever happened to him. While locked up, Madden grew close to one of his employees, Wendy Ballou. It was like an old-fashioned courtship. We held hands. We were just able to kiss hello and goodbye. Um, we talked, and we wrote love letters back and forth. The romance started when I was in prison. I looked forward to her visits because, you know, it's such a heartbreaking thing to be in prison. And uh, she made it better for me. And I knew he loved me after I got um, his letter after our first kiss, which was in prison. A couple of thoughts on what transpired in the visiting room. A, it was the most fun I've had in two years. B, your heart was pounding more than mine. C, they married after his release and now have three children. Was it a concern of yours when you came out of prison, would my customers forgive me? I knew that my customers don't really care. They just want great shoes. Um, but I was hoping that I could contribute and not lose my talent. And also you changed, you know, you have this, I felt the need, you want to give back, you know, you want to, you, maybe there's a greater purpose for everything. At age 56, Steve Madden has come a very long way. Whether being a busy dad, Boom. a famous designer, Look at you rocking those boots. Or a hands-on businessman. The yellow is good, right? The yellow is really good. Madden is kicking up his heels. Would you have done anything differently, considering the way your life turned out? Of course. I wish that I had never been so foolish to break the law. But I would have never married my wife had I not gone to prison. And I would have never had my children. And so a lot of, uh, you know, everybody's got their own path. I love what I do, and, you know, I've been given a second chance. And so I'm going to make the most of it.